back with more Heartstopper. This is episode four, so we're going to reach the halfway point after this. So I imagine things are really going to kick off um, any time now. Although, they kicked off fairly significantly, I think, um, in the last episode, because Nick and Charlie had their first kiss. A um, bit of drama surrounding that, but kind of left off on sort of a cliffhanger-esque, I guess, of uh, Nick turning up at Charlie's doorstep. So hopefully we'll see um, how that interaction goes and where they go from here. You know, it's kind of, it's not something you can necessarily just put back in the box um, and forget about. So I'm intrigued to see, you know, where their relationship will lead and all the other like little secondary stories we've got going on with the other characters where um, they'll continue to develop. You know, there's a, there's a few potential um, bumps in the road, a few potential hurdles for everyone to climb. Um, so I'm just waiting to see which people or which kind of plot lines are going to cause some problems and which ones aren't, basically. Um, I imagine Harry is going to be one to watch, which I'm nervous for because, yeah, he doesn't seem like a great guy. Um, but yeah, either way, I'm really enjoying this so far and I can't wait to see what happens next. So let's get into the next one. I mean, he probably doesn't want to talk, to be it's fair, but... Be yes! No angst in this house. I like they've got, like, a theme tune, like this music track. I'm having a proper full-on gay crisis. <laughs> and it's not that I didn't want to, you know... Oh, buddy. Yeah, see the difference between what it was like with that other prick. What was his name? Ben. Ben. Ben there, done that. Ha! Ben and gone. Is it okay if we, like, keep this a secret? Hmm. Yeah. I just don't really know if I can... Uh, it, is di it is different. You know. <laughs> Wholesome. <laughs> they are adorable. I love how the ca the camera is so often like really close when it's both of them together, just like how intimate their relationship is. And Chai doesn't need a shower now, so two birds, one stone. Oh no, she's quite sweet. Oh man, I've had this, um, second year of college, um, there's a girl that I liked, she messaged me the day before, telling me that she liked me, so I said I liked her back, and we were in English together, and we had it, we had it first thing the next day, so I had that moment where she walked in, so they've captured that really well. Oh. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, you see, it's whole wholesome. There's a boy in there waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, is it their secret boyfriend or the straight boy crush? Both. He's on the rugby team. All they want to do at lunch is just sit on the field and chuck stuff at people. Chuck stuff. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Harry. He's of course, Harry. My friends are nothing like you. They're nothing. Mr. Achai was the only teacher who really cared that much. Well, he was giving me evils before he got here. Mm. Because he thought you were Ben. I told him about the Ben making me give us a secret thing. It not, I mean, that's nothing like what we're doing. Mm. To be fair, he probably would have died. Why are you here, Harry? 
Yeah, you show that Kony's boss. Oh my god, the flashbacks I'm having. I think we have like the exact same ones for those. Impressive shot, but dick move. Mm. Christ. Trouble is, he doesn't know what Nick's actually like. So, you know, he probably would be pissed. But he's walking away, Tao. Note it. I like that you're still like checking. Well, maybe you should be better, hey, Harry? I like that Isaac is always reading. Oh, oh dear. What's wrong with Avengers? Hundred percent dickhead. Oh heck! Ooh, oh shit! Uh oh! Oh no! Is it okay if we like? Oh, I just want to go and check on him. I wish you'd done that. Oh, 30 seconds, okay. That's fine. Cool. You've got some blood on your face, though. Well, I think you all do. Oh, I see. Just to have a sweet moment. That makes sense. You want to keep us a secret and I'm messing it up? I don't think we've done anything. You should be saying sorry. Yeah. Sorry, antiseptic wipes. I love that Isaac just knows everything. Okay. Isaac just wants everyone to have a good time. Maybe we should just stop getting involved. I can't believe you just actually suggested that. <laughs> I was going to say that. Who are you? You'll be watching Avengers next. Shut up. Have they replaced us? As if anyone could replace your incredibly annoying, loud presence in my mm -hmm. Everything. Oh no, it's the disaster I feared. No! Okay, um, another really fantastic episode. Uh, this definitely felt like, I mean, there was a literal storm, I think, in that rugby match, but yeah, this feels like we've had a gentle, mainly wholesome ride up till now, and then things might be kicking off with what happened at the end there. Um, obviously, Nick's just not ready yet, and 
it's going to be an awkward situation and probably ask a lot of questions if he did say no to Imogen. So it's it's an unfortunate thing, and I know it's going to probably cause some issues, but hopefully it'll also be resolved fairly quickly, please. Um, but, you know, not great that Ellen Tao also overheard that, so that's going to be ammunition, I guess, for them to maybe be against Nick because they just don't know him and what him and Charlie have currently. Um, but this is either going to be, you know, a, a big deal, like a deal breaker for maybe this blossoming relationship, or it's going to be a way for, you know, Charlie's friends to actually learn a bit more about Nick and kind of see who he really is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't even begin to imagine being in that situation where you just can't openly be yourself like that. I mean, oh God. Um, so yeah, it it's kind of an impossible situation really you, you just there's no real winners because even in the long run you know i think imogen is gonna end up getting hurt come what may and she seems so excited and everything's like oh god she does seem like i mean i don't think she's the sharpest tool in the shed to quote the best of all time um but you know she seems really nice and actually quite sweet um but yeah it's just unfortunate how things are seeming to be working out there um, but still, you know, I, I like that it's another side character that's kind of getting a bit more to do and I'm sure she'll get some interesting stuff in the future with this and the scene she had, um, where she talked to Tara about the whole thing with what could have happened with her and Nick and, um, yeah, it, it was interesting, like, it was saying, like, he literally saw her kissing her girlfriend at a party and yet they're still asking if she's dating this guy. Um, you know, because that's still kind of, you know, the default option, I suppose, which isn't right. Um, but that is an interesting kind of commentary, I guess, on how that still kind of is today, the assumptions people are just going to make. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of an interesting thing as well, what they explored with that, but... Yeah, we had some neat little stuff going on with some of the side characters like Imogen. Um, and yeah, it was nice to see Tara and Darcy, just their new kind of attitude, just being like, you know, we're not going to make a big deal of it. There's going to be, you know, no official announcements and stuff. We're just going to, you know, share what we have in the way we want to and people can kind of deal with it or they can't. Um, so I like that they're seeming to, you know, they're in a, a good sweet spot of, you know, openness in their relationship and they can just be kind of open with that. So that was very wholesome. Um, and then, yes, also, um, you know, Tao is continuing to have these concerns, I think, about losing Charlie as a, as a friend and um, everything kind of continuing to amp up with that. And I think, you know, it's probably going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back with the bit with Charlie and, um, not Charlie, uh, Nick and Imogen at the end there. Um but yeah, it, it's it's a twisted life, isn't it? Because he just was saying like, oh, you know, maybe we should just leave, you know, keep out of it. It's their business. And now he's probably going to make it his business again. Probably realises soon enough that it's not his place to kind of have his say over that per se. Um, but yeah, I liked the extra little bits we got of them as well. Isaac's still just vibing. Loki, one of my favourite characters. He's just there like, I'm here to read a book, have a good time. You know, let people live their best lives. Um, he is very funny. Um, but yeah, I also really loved the kind of opening section where we saw the continuation of Nick and Charlie's conversation. Um, the fact that, you know, he does want to give things a go um, and just kind of take the time to explore, you know, who he is, what he is, um, and kind of keep it a secret for now. So, you know, an interesting reflection of how it started when we first met Charlie um, and what was going on with him and Ben. Um, but I like that they're kind of defining that it is different and we're seeing, you know, we actively saw um, Nick kind of check up on Charlie and like, are you sure this is okay? Um, so I like that, you know, we're very much aware that he is very much counting Charlie's feelings and, you know, keeping him in, involved and engaged in that relationship instead of it being very one-sided, you know, this is what I want and when, you know, it seems moments between them um, are just happening somewhat organically, like after the rugby match. Um, or they have little moments where they plan it and like they meet up in the art room and stuff. 
which is again a nice little sequence i like that we saw the support of our teacher again and he was like giving nick evils um so yeah i don't know if again that could be a problem going forward because you know however long that may continue and however long it's going to take nick to really kind of find himself and be comfortable with himself and be open about who he is um you know that's still going to be time that charlie can't be openly with the person that he's with and that's obviously not going to be his ideal scenario either and that's what was frustrating him about the whole thing with ben so um you know is that going to be an issue ultimately as well in the long run it, it just depends but also you know nick needs to go at his own pace so that might be something that i don't know forces them apart or whatever that makes me sad i just want the wholesomeness um but yeah I, I really enjoyed you know continuing to see that relationship grow and develop a bit um and yeah big complication i think coming our way with that ending so a bit in you know a bit concerned about what that means and where that will lead but you know we're going to find out anyway and hopefully it will still work out there's still half the show to go um harry continues to be an absolute dick uh not even worth my time i'm hoping he gets some kind of comeuppance or just desserts or just a good talking to again um and it, you know for it to actually stick because uh, you know we saw nick's kind of realizing like oh maybe i shouldn't be hanging out with these people now and he's realizing you know who they are like they're all, they're all just like copy and paste lads 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 aren't they and i'm sure you know that has a place in some friendship groups and some people will enjoy that kind of thing um but yeah i, I think what i'm hoping in the long run is you know Charlie's friends kind of come to know and understand Nick a lot better and see what him and Charlie have and Nick's going to kind of realise that maybe Charlie's group of friends is maybe the friendship group that he should kind of gravitate towards and kind of hang out with um, that could be that could be the big end goal um, but I did like seeing some kind of crossover in a sense because um, Elle introduced um, Tara and Darcy to the others and I liked a few moments with them and it was just a really great set of characters there like all watching the rugby um so I really enjoyed that. And to have like a rugby episode was good fun. Um, so yeah, some really good stuff going on again. Big complications as ever. Um, but some sweeter moments as well, particularly the kind of the start of, you know, their relationship in the first few minutes of the episode. I thought that was a really sweet whole sequence and very well shot. I love how, you know, the Charlie and Nick scenes are being shot. Um, you know, it, it's very purposeful direction. And I am noticing it's the same director every time and, it's also a guy who worked on Doctor Who years back. Um, he's a very good director, Euros Lin. So um, uh, I, I like that they can be consistent in how certain characters, how certain relationships are being presented in the show because it's all like the same director's vision, um, which is probably a you know a great way of keeping the story consistent. Um, so yeah, really enjoying it still. Another great episode. Um, can't wait to see what happens in like the second half of the show now. Um, I'm I am prepping myself for more angst and complications and stuff how you know how he left things off but we shall see hopefully there'll still be a good dose of wholesomeness like i need to see nick's dog again please where is nelly <laughs> best character anyway uh another great episode looking forward to seeing where it goes next um and until my next reaction thanks for watching